Hey, thanks for taking a look at my video today. I'm sure you've seen a lot and heard a lot about Linux MCE and all the con and all the abilities that it can do and all the wonderful features that it has and how great it is. But you may be kind of curious or wondering, how do I download it? What are what are the differences and options of all the downloads that are available to me? And what do they mean? Like, well, I'm here to try to help downloading it so that you don't have to pay for it by buying discs. Of course, if downloading is not your cup of tea and burning discs is not your cup of tea, you're just not interested in doing that kind of thing, it's too technical for you, then certainly go take a look at Google and find the download sites that will, or the, sorry, the sites that will allow you to go ahead and buy the CDs burnt already for you. They'll ship them in the mail for you for a few bucks and you'll then get them and be able to install them and have fun. But for those of you that want to download it, I'm assuming that's why you're watching my video today. First step we need to do is right over on here is our download link. We click on this little link here and that'll take us to the download page where we can download Linux MCE. The first thing I noticed when I went to download, when I went to look at this, was that it, was, it tells me that Linux MCE is based on uh, 0710. So of course I looked a little bit further down to find out that it was released on May 7th, 2008. It was also known as Linux MCE 0710RC2. So that was really interesting to me because I, I, I kind of figured out here at this point that what it says, and it tells us right up here, if there's a, there's a version that we can get of Linux MCE that is just um, the Linux MCE and doesn't include Kubuntu, is that we need Kubuntu 7.10 first. So this is a fairly old version of Kubuntu. Kubuntu is a KDE-based Ubuntu version of Ubuntu that many people like to use because they really enjoy using the, the KDE uh, desktop. Now, like Ubuntu, which is available for download as well, and it's quite popular and many people love it and enjoy it, both of these versions, as you can see, are now currently at 9.04. Yet, Linux MCE is based on 0.7.1.0. So this was a bit of a concern for me. I said, well, it's pretty old. You know, it's, it's only a little over a year old as far as the distribution has been around, so that's not too bad, but the the OS is fairly old, and more importantly, 7.10 has been deprecated. It's no longer supported. It's, it's over 18 months old now, and that's as far as certain versions of Ubuntu that come out are supported for. They, they release a new version of Ubuntu every six months, so they only support it for three release cycles. This is not going to be much of a concern for us. We just want to download it. We want to check it out. We want to see how it works. So before we go ahead and do that, because we're all excited, I'm sure, look at the known issues page. Find out what kinds of issues are going to be a bit of a problem, what kinds of things might be showstoppers for you. There's no point in going through all this downloading and burning and trying to install it to find out it doesn't work, and then you end up wasting your time trying to fix it. There's also the installation guide or, or and or the DVD installation guide that you should review as far as trying to get the thing working and configuring it and learning a little bit more about the nitty gritty details of it. First thing it tells us to do, of course, is it says it really recommends that we download the torrent links rather than the mirrors if possible. And as it states, you're far less likely to get corruption that'll kill your install. This is, this is very important. Now, if you've never used torrent before, on Windows, there's a very popular one called uTorrent or MicroTorrent that I like to use, and it allows you to download torrents. There's also other tools you can get on Ubuntu uh, called Transmission or rTorrent that pretty much do the same thing. But we're going to assume that you know this is an option that's 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 okay for you to do. If not, go ahead and use the mirrors. Or if you have a problem using torrents, use the mirrors. This time of after a year or so after the release, downloading off the mirrors will be probably a lot faster and easier than downloading them from the torrents. The torrents will probably be very slow because there probably won't that many people still using the torrents to download it and move it around. Though it should still work fine because as long as these guys are supporting it and saying, hey, use the torrent links, it's very likely you're going to find that uh, the torrents are going to be available and, and should download fairly quickly. However, if you've ever come around Linux MCE when they're doing a release, you're probably better off to use the torrents because they'll come across quite faster. Because torrents take advantage of the fact that there's more people downloading it, whereas most mirrors, you get too many connections, they slow down, they stop responding, and you start running into problems. Regardless of how you download it, you should definitely run an MD5 sum 
on the download and compare that to the checksum that you'll get on the download site itself. And the reason this is recommended is just to make sure that the download becomes is downloaded intact. Uh, Ubuntu has some wonderful documentation on how to MD5 some. Really, this is this is basic information whether you're using it on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Solaris. You can take a look at the documentation here. It'll tell you all you need to know about how to do MD5 sums, what it does, all that wonderful stuff. But it just verifies that what you download is 100% correct. There's nothing worse than downloading a file, burning it to CD, installing it, and finding out it doesn't work or it's broken or you start having stupid issues with certain things broken that don't work properly and you're banging your head against the wall trying to figure out why and everybody's telling you, ah, you're crazy, it should work, you know, and you're like, well, it doesn't work. You should have checked your file first. Chances are you're going to find that you had an error. So that's one of the things you definitely want to do to make sure. Once you've found, once you've just got read all that and checked all that out, we're ready to go ahead and download. Now we we're going to go ahead and take a look at the official torrents here first because they're going to show us the basically the five different um, ways we can download this, as you can see here. So you know. People like, oh, holy cow, we're just downloading one file. Why is there five different versions? Well, we're going to explain that for you here. The first version is a DVD version, or the DVD-I386. And this version is designed specifically for 32-bit processors, or traditional processors of the last few, well, at least last decade or so. If you're not sure if you've got a 32-bit processor or not, download this version. This is definitely going to be the default de facto version provided you want to download on DVD. If you want it on CD instead, download the, this particular version here, which is the CD1 and the CD2-I386 version, which will, will allow you to burn two CDs to do the install from the two install CD basis. If, for whatever reason, you've already got Kubuntu 7.10 already installed, you can go ahead and download the DVD-DL-I386 version, which will simply install the Linux MCE components on top of an existing Kubuntu 7.1 zero install. Chances are you're not going to use that one because you probably don't have that one available to you. Um, the la next option available to us is the DVD-AMD 64-bit version. This is the, the, the DVD of the 64-bit version of the Linux MCE. Obviously you could use this if you have a 64-bit OS, though you could still use a 32-bit one if you, you know, if you wanted to. The choice would be totally up to you. Most people who have 64-bit processors would probably go the 64-bit OS route. And of course, again, you have the CD1 and CD2 options of the AMD 64-bit version as well. If you don't want to use the torrents, of course, you've got the, the various mirrors that you can download from. There's a set of worldwide mirrors. There's a worldwide mirror here, which has all the disks available to you in the in the ISO format and then of course you've got the uh, regional servers that are available as well. For burning an ISO once you go to downloaded you would simply use your basically disk burning software to go ahead and create the disk itself and then you'd go nuts and have an install. Now if you want something that was a little bit more current of course more up to date you could use SVN to download the sources directly. Um, over here we see the link that that link takes us to which tells us how to go ahead and download Linux MCE directly from the track server which is where all the sources are contained. SVN is a little bit more sophisticated of a method of downloading the material of course, it gives us the bleeding edge latest files that the developers are working on and that they've released. These are considered unstable. They may not work. That is a very important thing to keep in mind here. So if you don't like playing with stuff that may not work, even though it should, or as far as you're concerned it should, this is not a place to be. You do not want to be here. This is more for advanced users. The first thing you're going to need to have set up before you even begin, is obviously, is you're going to need a Kubuntu machine with a working OS you're going to want to make sure that it is build ready in other words you've already got software installed on the machine through packages or downloads that will allow you to build the software and do software development even if you're not interested in doing software development you're going to need the, the build essentials in order to make this happen and on top of that, you're going to need to make sure that you've downloaded the SVN and its dependencies to ensure that it's going to work as directed. So you definitely want to make sure that you have build capability installed, you've confirmed it works, and you've installed SVN, and you've confirmed it works. 